Have you heard of the calendar year Triple Crown? It's a coveted pursuit in the world of backpacking. It's comprised of America's three national long-distance scenic trails, the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. And joining us now is the sixth person ever to complete a calendar year Triple Crown and the first and only Canadian to complete it as well. And you're Christine's nephew, <laughs> Michael Papadotis. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> so, Michael, you're 29 years old. You're from Toronto. And it took you 268 days from January 31st to October 26th with a total of 7,750 miles. Is that right? Yep. What's the first thing you did when you got home? <laughs> I went on. I went to a liquor store and bought the cheapest bottle of champagne they had. Uh, well, yeah. Had a little solo celebration. You took this very seriously. You quit your job. You gave up your apartment, you planned your route, and, and food drops down to the last mile. What sparked this whole idea in the first place? I was kind of at a place in my life where I wasn't really too happy with what I was doing, and I, I had always been pushing my limits to see what I was physically possible and able to do, and this was, I mean, being outdoors and being in hiking uh, had always appealed to me. It, it was always a hobby of mine, and this kind of seemed like the hardest thing one could possibly ever do. Um, so I found that intriguing and I just went for it. I just wanted to kind of see what, what my physical and mental limits and my capabilities were. Did you, was it strategic when you started? Yeah. In I'm, terms of where, what the weather was and conditions were that you'd obviously done a lot of research. A lot of research went into it, yeah. Um, it, it's really a gamble based on the weather. Um, you kind of want to give yourself as big of a buffer as possible if you're going to try and attempt something like this. So... Um, if I started too late, I, I, I could have met with winter again, considering I hiked through all four seasons. So mm -hmm. I tried to, to start as early as possible and get my legs into hiking shape and give myself some extra days. So how many, um, how many kilometers, how many miles would you go a day? On average? Uh, so for the whole year, the average miles I walked per day was about 32 miles a day. Okay. Um, and if I factored in all the rest days and the travel days, it worked out to around uh, 28 miles a day. Your total hiking days, 241. Yeah, it was 268 total days, and that included all my rest days, but 241 days of hiking, yeah. Pairs of shoes worn out, 14. <laughs> so how... Yeah, it was... Uh, I was shoes probably or getting boots? Shoes. I only wore trail runners. Um, they dry out a lot faster than boots, and they're cheaper. <laughs> total states that you hiked through? Uh, 22. 14 on the Appalachian Trail, uh, 5 on the Continental Divide Trail and three on the Pacific Crest Trail. Tell us about the trails, because am I right that you didn't necessarily do one trail all at once? Yeah, so with the weather windows, uh, with the way that it worked out, it was a really uh, late snow year in the Northeast and a really early snow year in in Colorado and the Rocky Mountains. So uh, I hiked sections of the trail uh, uh, before jumping in between the two based on the amount of snow that was still on some of the trails. So um, I hiked north um, on the Appalachian Trail and then went over to the Continental Divide Trail, did a section of that in the desert before going over to the Pacific Crest Trail. How bad was the snow? Uh, it was pretty bad in the northeast. Uh, in, in April, um, there was about three northeast storms in a row in, in early April, which dumped anywhere between three to five feet of snow throughout the region. So when I was in northern Vermont, it was it was pretty dicey. But it wasn't just that. I mean, there were also um, some crazy experiences and some dangerous things like wolves and grizzly bears and rattlesnakes and... Yeah. Um, I mean, coming down through the Continental Divide Trail when hiking season was over and I was pretty much me uh, and the grizzly bears and some hunters out there who were looking to bag some elk. Um, it was, it was, I went through some pretty dicey areas and going through Colorado after uh, significant snow had already fallen, there was some significant avalanche danger. So yeah. no shortage of uh, scary moments. I know that your mother did not sleep a few times <laughs> and we talked on the phone about that. I mean, um, what would you say is the most um, amazing thing that happened to you during this journey? I mean, I got to spend all that time alone in nature. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely got some perspective on my own life. Mm -hmm. um, you, you realize how little you need to really be happy and survive when you have everything that you need on your backpack. Um, and you get to move, you know, place to place, sleep in a different place every night. So that was pretty exciting. What life lesson do you think you learned that you're going to take with you? 
It's tough because I'm still kind of digesting it, um, considering I just finished a, a week and a half ago. But um, definitely try and have add a little bit more balance in my life, um, where I don't have to quit my basically my entire life to take off for a year to do a huge experience like this. I mean, this was you're not going to do this every time. It was kind of a one time experience, but it'd be nice to bring aspects of this into my life where I can have a little bit more balance and get away and hike and and do that type of stuff while also working <laughs> while also working it because w what would you say the trip cost altogether uh all said and done around eighteen thousand canadian worth um, it depends on the exchange rate and of course it's worth it <laughs> <laughs> every penny every penny what made you decide to do it alone as opposed to many other uh, hikers who go in groups of two or three I mean, it's, it would be pretty afraid? difficult. I'm afraid, sure, but it would be pretty difficult for me to rope someone into beforehand saying yes to 7,750 miles. And I mean, being alone, you really have the flexibility to move at your own pace in your own schedule. Whereas if you're hiking with a partner, it could either go very bad or very good. But generally, I've seen that sometimes partnerships, when people go out to hike the trail together, that it can end pretty badly. Did you ever say, that's it, I'm going home? Why am I here? I mean, I said, why am I here a lot of times? But you Cold, didn't give up. No. Um, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. set kind of incremental goals throughout the course of the year, which I was working towards. Um, and, I mean, I was just – the small goals really helped me kind of compartmentalize it because it, it is so many miles. If you're thinking about just the end, it's going to be – you could fail pretty easily. I mean, a lot of people who have attempted this have failed. There's, there's only five people who have ever completed it in the history of these trails, and some of them are 150 years old. Right, that's amazing. Now, you're a pretty social person. So what effect did it have on you to be out in the middle of nature sometimes all by yourself for days on end? Yeah, I mean, I mean it was a new experience for me being pretty social, being from a big city like Toronto, having a lot of a big friend group. Um, but it was, it was kind of a little bit of the purpose as well, just to get away from that for a while and live life a little bit differently, considering I had been doing that for the past 28 years of my life. So it was it was actually really nice to just kind of be alone a lot. So where can people go to see your trip pictures and, and follow you? You've got to have this on social media. Yeah, I, I mostly just post it through Instagram. I posted basically daily updates of kind of my mileage and, and some, some interesting facts about the day. So And what's your what's your Instagram? It's just my name, Mike, Michael. at Mike Papadatos. Mike Papadatos. Yeah. Mike Papadatos. So for anyone contemplating doing this or part of this, what advice would you give them? I would say do it. <laughs> it's uh, it's by far worth it. The experience, the people that you meet, the places that you see, uh, it's really going to, I mean, for me, I can only speak to my own experience, but I, I definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things in my life and kind of gave me some faith back in humanity. How did you do the research? There's no shortage of online resources for these type of trails. They're pretty popular in the States. So uh, the all the organizations, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, the Pacific Crest Trail Association, and the Continental Divide Trail Coalition, I would start first at their websites, and they're, they're pretty good resources for, for trip planning and that type of thing. Any plans to do the Cross Canada Trail? <laughs> <laughs> i got to let my feet heal first. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. Um, so what's next for you once you've recovered? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I'm working on a couple of things uh, as far as business is concerned to help me try and restock my bank account for time being. But um, hopefully some more hiking in the future. And uh, uh, other than that, just seeing my friends and family and getting kind of back into the swing of things around here. Well, Mike Pabadatis, thank you so much. And congratulations for being the first Canadian to do this. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, she said